the distance, I just see meat wagons all parked up. They, yeah. they barricaded. Yeah. They barricaded the road. And I was running. And I was like, oh man, they're here already. And I turn around and I see the police guard just driving slowly behind me. I'm still running. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Killer, killer, b- 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 podcast. Killer, killer, official. dot com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Podcast, what's good, people? Subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, you know the deal, you know the drill. Um, big shout out graffitikings.co.uk. And you're on now, what's good, people? We have a very special guest, long time, long overdue, Nathan Bowen inside the place. What's good, my brother? What's going on, bro? <laughs> How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who this man is, take a real good look at it. This is the man, that is, I mean, if to, to, to deliver the kind of art that you have, uh, courtesy, if you're not watching, you're listening, you're missing out on a big ding here. I've got given a piece by my brother. Thank you so much. Look at the... Come on. Now, if you don't know... Come on. If you don't know about this geezer, you're about to get to know. When did it all begin, man? I mean, the, the, the look alone, the style alone, it's, it's so eye-catchy as... It all started, like, about... I mean, I've been drawing all my life since I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, but these, this, this sort of like fast, elusive style, yeah. it came about like literally 2007. Yeah. So I was on holiday with my mates. Yeah. We went to uh, Falaraki. And, Where's um, that? That's like Rhodes, the, 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 one of the islands. You nice. Know, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, the nice. them 18 to 30 type holidays. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so uh, yeah, I was chilling by the pool yeah. and um, had, had my paper, I had a biro pen, and I just started sketching you know, this... These, this, oh, this a, dem- a demonic character. That's what I call them, demons. demons so yeah. it was, it was this, this sketch I was drawing with a biro pen, and you know during this time I was I was at St Martin's Uni, mm. uh, just doing like fine art stuff. But while I was in, when I was in Falaraki doing this sketch, I noticed a lot of people were like, "Yo, man, that's that's a dope fire." Yeah, yeah, like wow, I want. That 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 that's, that's different. So people are like, man, this is this is really good. So that sort of like, that gave me the inspiration and confidence to to stick with that style, the fast, loose, sketchy style. Yeah. And I used to like uh, cross action. So in the in the olden medieval days when they used to draw uh, their, their pictures, they that's used to right. cross hatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the lines. So yeah, I took some of that influence and um, started cross hatching myself with the biro pen. And uh, yeah, it went from a sketch on paper. And um, I remember, like, on the way home from the holiday, I was like, "All right, I'm, I need to keep this paper nice and neat. I haven't mm-hmm. got no, I haven't got no cardboard tube to put it in." Ah, damn it! So yeah. uh, you know, yeah, I just rolled it up, put a bit of um, what's it, elastic band around it, and uh, managed to like put it in my suitcase amongst the clothes. But yeah, it was full, it was fine. So I've still got it now, and uh, that was the spring ball. That was the start. So the character I drew was a character. He's called um, it's called Blueprint. Um, it literally started with Blueprint. Blueprint is a guy, he's half man, half demon. So when he died, he got sent to hell. And like when he's in hell, he, he learned about, you know, how to kill these demons. Uh, so the idea was this, this, you got a Blueprint in hell, you know, he's the, he's the prisoner of hell, but yeah, he's fighting his mad demons and he's drinking the demon blood and becoming half man, half demon. So this story, I'm not gonna go into it fully, but this story, I, I called it Afterlives. Go so, for, going fully, please. Going fully. Yes. So yeah. So afterlives is the <laughs> story of um, Blueprint. So uh, Blueprint was uh, originally his name was called Azul, uh, and Azul it means blue in Portuguese. So yeah, I was like, all right, I'm gonna call him. Az-. So in, in, in his human form, he's Azul. Then he died. Then he got sent to hell. Then he became Blueprint. And so he, he in his in his previous life, he was uh, a combat man in the army. He used to fight loads of people. Used to be a hitman. Mm-hmm. And then um, when he died, he got sent to hell. Then he's amongst all these demons. And these demons were like tr- trying to kill him. So he, he learned how to fight them. And he, he learned that if he drank their blood, he, 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 he became stronger and bigger and better. More Stands better to fighter. reason, of course. Yeah. So yeah, like, you know, half man, half demon. Oh. And so, yeah, I call this story Afterlives. And it was, it was literally, this is the start of all the, the, the whole demon characters, all the stuff you see on the street. Yeah. So in Afterlives, I was looking to make it into a comic, and I still am. 
So I was thinking afterlives. Afterlives is, you know, you go to hell, you die. And I was thinking for me personally, I don't really believe in heaven and hell. Mm. I'm more about reincarnation. Mm. So I was thinking, how can I make this? How can I apply this, this belief of reincarnation into my art? So I was doing this. I was doing all the sketches, always at home. And I was like, man, no one's really seeing my work. I'm doing mm. it at uni, but no one's really seeing it. Mm. Like applying to different galleries, mm -hmm. making an online portfolio, and just saying, yo, man, this is my artwork. Um, how can I get it out there? Yeah. So with, the, all the, with all the afterlife sketching, I was like, yo, I, I think I've got to take this to the streets, you know? Yeah. You know, I'm doing it all at uni, month in, month out. I've got... I've got to let people see this. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I thought I'm going to use the streets as a gallery. Yeah. So instead of like, you know, trying to waste my time with these galleries that didn't care, they wanted people that's established. And back then, yeah, no one knew who I was. So like, yeah, I was just like, I'm going to take it to the streets. So the ethos was afterlives, trying to find abandoned walls, walls that like have no soul, walls that are dead and giving these walls an artistic iron afterlife. Oh, that's sick. So an artistic reincarnation. An artistic afterlife, I love it. When I think of your style, it has a British look about it. Yeah. And that's really hard to define. I can't, I can't quite put my finger on what distinctively is that's British about it. Yeah. It, I think there's, a, a, there's been suggestions in some of your pieces that lean towards a, a more patriotic, like, like you've got the, the, um, the soldiers and you've got all these yeah. kind of different... Um, visual representations, you know what I mean? Of, of a British s strength. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what, why was the influence on that? And how, did, how, did, how do you create something that's so British? Um, but more for me, it's, it's, my uncle said to me, do artwork that reflects your environment. Mm. So for me, I, I'm, 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 I'm from, I'm, I'm, I'm British, I'm black British. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Union Jacks are flag. It's had a lot of bad stigma. Yeah. Um, but that's that's going to be our flag. That's mm. our flag. That's always going to be our flag. Mm. So I, you know, I wanted to incorporate my environment, like London. I was going to London, seeing the bare skin guards, the mm. cold stream guards, uh, the beef eaters, and I thought, you know, I want to I want to put Union Jacks in my work because mm. I, I love the flag. I love yeah. I love the red, the blue, that's right. the white. It's, it's a great combo. Yeah. So that's why I, I I I'm so keen and on that. And it's very quite cross hatchy as well. Funnily enough, <laughs> yeah. as a as a big yeah. shout, Harry inside the place. What's good, Harry? Say what's up. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah that's Blackmore. Up. Yeah, hold tight. Um, yeah, the cross hatching on the flag as well. It kind of leans a lot into your style, doesn't it? It has that kind of yeah, flavour. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, I started doing um, a lot of the Union Jacks about like eight years ago. Um, it, it was I didn't really do the Union Jacks on the street. They were mainly mm. like my studio stuff, like mm. stuff on canvas boards. Mm. And then um, yeah, I um, it was I think it was two thousand and twelve. Uh, I got a phone call. And uh, his phone call from one of my mates. He used to run street art tours. Kevin from Urban Gentry. And he I'll said to Kev. me... Yeah, I said Kevin. And he said to me, Naif, um, take this number down. A woman called Kate's going to give you a call. So I took the number down and um, I, call, I called it. And um, I spoke to Kate. And Kate goes, yeah, we're going to do an art documentary. I was like, okay. She didn't tell me what it was. She mm. just said it's going to be a BBC art documentary. Mm. So she said to me, oh, could you send a... Um, disclosure form to the email to the email so i emailed her disclosure form and then she said to me okay so what, what's going to happen is this is going to be the apprentice um this, this is going to be the urban art uh, show for the apprentice on bbc what so i was like all right then cool all right you I'm know those disclosure ones isn't it where you really yeah. want to tell people about this yeah hard exactly shit. yeah <laughs> no, no, no you can't say shit <laughs> yeah man it's true i was just like well, who do i tell what do i do so i Obviously, I told my mum, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Standard. Standard and, uh, rule break number one. Yeah. Tell parents. <laughs> I told my mum. And, um, but at this point, I wasn't on it. it, was, it, was, it was, this is the point where I, I could be on it. So yeah. she said to me, what you need to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be going around all, all different, different people's houses, artists, interviewing them, getting, to, getting the flavour of what mm. they're about. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do some artwork. Um, so when she comes around, I've got a nice selection of work for her to look at. Yeah. And that's when I started doing the Union Jacks because I thought, yo, this is the Union Jacks. This is, this is, it's our flag. It's, it's, it's all I can make this into a product. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking marketing products. Crazy. I'm going to get into this marketing thing with you later as well. Trust me. Yeah. So, yeah. but what happened in the competition? Um, so, so basically, um, she come around my house and she was like, yeah, man, um, interviewing me, t telling me like what, what my art's about, asking me all these different questions. 
And then she goes, cool, that's, that's, I'm, 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 I've got all the information now. And I said, okay, what, what happens next? She goes, oh, I'll, I'll give you a call. And she gave me a call. She goes, okay, we're going to use you for the show. So, you know, you've got The Apprentice, isn't it? all the guys in the suits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's a whole other world. Yeah, you've got, two different, you've got the two different teams. Yeah. So I wasn't in there, I was myself, Nathan mm. Bowen. Mm. So the idea was they had to make an art show. They had to make an art show and they, they went to uh, Bristol, they went to uh, Waterloo, Leak Street, and they had to just like meet different artists mm. and work out what artists they want to pick for the art show. Mm -hmm. So there was like, a total of four artists. Um, there was Copyright, there yeah. was James Jessup, um, there was Pure Evil, and there was myself. Um, so like Pure Evil was on my team, mm. Team Sterling. Thank God for that. <laughs> Jeez. Can you? Yeah. That guy, man. That guy's got royalties. Oh my God. That guy's got royalties. You know yeah, what I mean? No. <laughs> Shout out Pure Evil, what? Yeah. Man, like Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so I was on his team and yeah, the gallery show happened. They filmed it. They, they come around to my house. At the time I was leaving my mum. So my mum was like, all right, let's turn the back room into uh, a gallery. So we got, we got, we moved the sofa, we moved the TV, uh, we took all the remaining stuff on the Big off the walls. Big up Mumsky, come yeah. on. So yeah, she, we, we made that into like a small gallery. So all the Union Jack pieces I put up on the wall and stuff. That's amazing. And, um, yeah, they come to my house. The, the, the apprentice team came to my house. So we had Karen, Karen, and he had uh, Nick. Nick was there as well. They came to my Ooh. house like mad, like they walked through the door. And you know, t TV, man, you know what TV's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I yeah, opened yeah, the door yeah. and they were like, yeah, mate, could you um, do that again, please? <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah, I had to close the door, open it again. They walked in, <laughs> how you doing? You're all right, cool, nice to meet you. And then, um, yeah, they, they looked at the artwork and they were like, yeah, okay, okay, basically the big day is tomorrow, the art show, but we're not sure, too sure if we're going to use you yet. We've still got to look at the, all the other artists. So they said to me, we're going to give you that call. You know, do you know, do you know, we watched The Apprentice and like, you know, the, 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 the person gets the phone call. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was waiting all day for this phone call and they gave me the phone <laughs> the call. The pain. Yeah. The ringing pain. Yeah. yeah. I remember like, yeah, I was, uh, my mum and my dad took, took me to Bromley. They said, oh, we're going to go to Bromley, we're going to treat you. Yeah, you know, if you make it, you make it. If you don't, you don't. So we went Bromley. And I remember like walking through Bromley thinking, oh man, when is this phone call going to happen? Yeah. Then I got home, bang, phone call came. And they were like, yo, Nathan, yes, we'd like to use your art for, for, for the show, the big show tomorrow. Wow, wow, wow. And I was like, wow. So, all right, so, all right currently I'm on the show, but now I'm on the show furthermore. Like, wow, this is going to be, this is going to be good. So uh, the next day I had to go to um, Hoxton, yeah, Hoxton Arch 402. Had a little show there with Pure Evil, had a few pieces up, and yeah, uh, they filmed it, um, sold a few bits, and um, yeah, it was it was great. It was, what's, what's, it was the, good. what's the promo kickback on that? Like to be so in the public eye like that, that must have that must have changed quite a lot. Yeah, it did. At the time, you know, I was, I was, I was the, you know, at the time I wasn't really selling art. Um, yeah. I had my Nathan Byrne art shop that was online and hardly sold anything, you know. So this was, this was the time where I was on Job Seekers and I was like, oh man, like, what do I do? Do I stick with the art or maybe try and You're starting to think twice career? and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, man, because this is the early days, you know. Yeah. I've started, I started doing street art 2009, so this is 2012 where, yeah, I had a few jobs here and there, yeah. but still trying to get myself known, really. Yeah. Still, still, still trying to get my foot in the door. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, um, I thought, yeah, this apprentice, um, it, it, it basically changed my life. Mm. So uh, when it was aired, it, it got aired May 2012. And um, for being on Job Seekers, doing voluntary work for different for different um, companies, like mm. I was doing voluntary work for old people's homes and stuff, just trying mm. to work out what do I want to do? Yeah, do yeah, I, yeah. Do I want to be an artist? Do Where's wanna, it all going? Yeah, yeah you know, do I want to do do be a social care mm. worker? Mm. Do you want to be a youth worker? And then, so it got aired. Actually, you'd be fucking great at both of them, to be fair, brother. Like, you're, yeah, you yeah. have you've got charisma and drive and energies, you know. It's uh, it's great. So I wouldn't appreciate that. Yeah. But you ended up doing the art in those places, like installations. Yeah. So, yeah. But so, 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 yeah. Like, um, it was on aired on TV, May two thousand twelve. Yeah. And bang, I remember like just chilling, and I was looking at my admin page on my art shop, and people were just buying pieces, buying, 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 just buying loads of pieces. Blown, man. Your mind must have just been like, wow, yeah. was, I'm on this, I'm on the wave. It's moving yeah. now. That must mm. have really spun you out. Because I remember, like at the time, um, the next day, I had to go to. Um, I, was, I was working for Lucian Hospital doing voluntary work. <laughs> so, so when you were when you were doing job seekers, they if you're on it for so long, they they, they basically they give you job seekers, but they have to put you onto like a scheme, mm. so a voluntary scheme. Mm. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna work for Lucian Hospital, mm. 
and um, I was doing voluntary work there and I was working in the, the children's ward. So where the children wait for the appointments, mm. I was there as an artist just doing sketches with the kids, just keeping them entertained. So I was like, you know, how, how, can, I, how can I basically do artwork in a hospital? Mm. How can I do that? Mm. So and that, that's, yeah, I worked out a way of doing that, you know, be, being wow. the artist guy who yeah. comes in, the kids are waiting to have the appointment, huh? they've got the TV on, they've got all the games, and I'm there with the sketching with them, you know, you can oh, draw this, you can draw that's that. That's good money, man. They wait. That's so fucking, you know, that's... that's but it's voluntary, money. it's voluntary, so, you know. Uh, um, so, yeah, like, you know, The Apprentice, I remember the next day I had to go to this, go to do the voluntary scheme, and um, I was like, yo, man, you know what? I said to him, guys, I was on The Apprentice last night, and they're like, yeah, I know, we see you. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to come here again now. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your time, but yeah. I'm done. Yeah. And after that, yo, man, just sending pieces and um, realised, yo, what's, what's going to keep up the work? What's, what's going to keep up that success? Street art. Yeah. Keep on, stick to the streets, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, street art. Um, what's your, if you don't mind us asking, I mean, mm. as transparent as we can on the show, how many do you reckon you're shifting at that point? What's the average? Like, what's the average of turnaround? When you were going... Hammer and tongs with the apprentice. How many pieces were you selling? Loads, man. Really? Was, yeah, I mean, I went for a period. It was like, it was like a basically, like, it was it was a really hot. It was a really hard, hot month. Yeah. The month wasn't fire, and it was like selling pieces every day. Yeah. So like, it was to, uh, so for that whole month, I say like in a week, I was probably selling like over probably twenty to thirty what? pieces. And yeah, you just canvases, to... just wow. banging them out. <gasps> yeah, banging them out. Quick, quick, quick. quick. Mate, yeah. That's a lot in it. Just repetition, you know, and yeah. you know my style is very fast, so you know I could, I could work quite fast, yeah. and it's, it's, it's yeah, it's natural, naturally working quickly. But to do that in the time that you have in your own time, yeah, and d- defining a look and a feel, your 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 way of working, I would imagine there is only one way of doing it, and that is as quick as possible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you ever get into these loopholes though in your head where you've um, <laughs> you repeat an action to the point that the the piece is kind of... You know, you get those wormholes yeah, where all of a sudden yeah, you're yeah. doing the same movements and stuff. Yeah. Have you heard of a guy called The Good and the Shitty? Is this this guy on No, not Instagram? too... No, I don't oh, think I have. He, do, he does the whole character with just one... Just one movement? Yeah, and he looks like shoelace. It's mad. I'll, I'll, I'll show you after. Yeah, the Good just and the literally Shitty. literally like... So, like Pen on paper, one doesn't doesn't yeah, come yeah. off the doesn't the, come off the paper. Not even slightly, and it looks so good. It's got some like old wow. school New York style comic look to it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But I always see that he repeats quite a lot of those actions. And I guess when you're doing something so quick and throwaway, quote unquote, you do go down those wormholes where you yeah. repeat yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like sometimes um, I like I like to challenge myself and be like, right, yeah, I'm gonna maybe paint a piece from the leg. So I always paint the eyes first. So I've yeah. got that, yeah, I've got that cemented in where when I do my character, it's always the eyes first, then the mouth, yeah. then the head, then the, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's all there. And uh, I was thinking to myself, oh, you know, maybe if I just try to do the, 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 the leg or the foot first, yeah. work from the bottom up, instead of going from the top to the down, work from the bottom to the top. And yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's just, mm. it, it changes the game. It's mm. like, it's different, man. My, my brain's telling me, do it this way. And I'm trying to say, do I do it? No, I'll do it this way. So yeah, you, I do get caught really? in that loophole of repetition. Um, so that's why I like doing like d- different things. Like for me, I, you know, I've got many styles. I don't always do the, 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 the sketchy demons. Like I said, I used to go to St. Martin's and um, used to do old paintings, cartoons. Um, my main, like when I was growing up, um, when I was growing up through school, um, I, I, through, through like primary school, mm. I wanted to be a carpenter. I wanted to be a carpenter. I didn't know where I was going, as in, like, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a carpenter. Then I wanted to be um, uh, one of those air traffic guys you know, that works in the airport yeah, and does yeah. the air trafficking, oh, random shit. things. Yeah, 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 then I yeah. wanted to play for Man U. <laughs> uh, but when you're a kid, innit, you know, you, you can't really find yourself. You just, all these different things, innit? Yeah, uh, I, I think I, I was a closet. Wanted to always wanted to be a graffiti right? I guess. But, Is it? Know, <laughs> but it's the thing, see, I, I haven't got the guts like this lot have, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. It takes yeah. a lot of guts to, to, to pull it off. You must get recognised whilst doing the pieces a lot. Yeah, a lot of times, yeah. How's that feel? Um, the... It's so, yeah, I don't mind it. Um, a lot of people, uh, it's like, yeah, mate, you're mate, you, um, you Nathan Bowen? Or some, some people, I mean, you, you Blackmore. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like no, I'm Bowen. Um, but yeah, some people, um, yeah, a, a lot of the time it happens. And I know it's like, most of the time I just want to crack on with the piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I've learned that, you know, boy, people see my work, they like it. It's, it's, it inspires them. Mm. So I have to like, literally appreciate that. 
and give him time of the day. Mm. No matter how much I want to finish this last bit of work, I'm, mm. I'm in the zone right now. I just have to stop and be like, oh, cool, man. Thanks for that. Nice to meet you. It's a beautiful so, thing, isn't it? It is a very beautiful thing, yeah. So, yeah, I'm very appreciate it. Because when I, when I see people I admire, and I'm like, yo, bruv, you're that dude that does them things, or you're the dude that, mm. uh, you know, I, I, I feel like I want to say something. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they give me the time, I'm like, right, I appreciate that. Then ones is when you like, you don't know what your mouth and your head is doing at the same time, yeah. and you just yeah. impulsively say, yo, you're... Yeah, big up. You know, you just do it. Don't you? People just do it, and I, I, yeah, I would imagine that is a uh, a high class a high class problem, but uh, one that you embrace. And yeah, man, it's crazy. I don't know anybody else that can do what you do. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like your style yeah. is so in, in tr- it's, it's 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 its own energy. Yeah, and I don't yeah. say that lightly because I've had some amazing people come through, but I've never. You know what I mean? You you really do have a distinctive look. Yeah, I mean you you got a cho- you got a choice in it. You could be yeah. one of one or one of many. Yeah, I like to be one of one of one. You yeah. know, um, I'm not trying to be like that next guy. I ain't trying to be like mm. this guy. I'm trying to be myself. Um, mm. So yeah, with the art and and I think with the art the the art talks for itself as well. The art mm. does its own thing. Yeah. I do it. I leave it, and it does its own thing. Yeah, you know that's right. It, it to to the point. Yeah, I agree with it because it's to the point that. You forget who the artist would be. Mm. How old are you? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. See, so young gun, but this thing looks like it's never. It's always been there. Do you know what I'm saying, Harry? You get what I'm coming from. Yeah. Or it just looks like it's always been there. Yeah, yeah. Like some Tate Tate shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's it. You know, because I, I I just I'm, I'm on it. You know, I go out. I wear the high vis jacket. I used to. Oh, it's in the early days of 2009 when I started. Um, Started doing the paintings. I always used to wake up, um, you know, wake up about half four. Mm. I'm like, yo, mum, I'll sneak down the house. Mm. Out of the house. And mum's like, where you going? I'm like, I'm just going to go and paint. And she's like, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Oh, mum, don't worry, man. Don't worry. Yeah, just yeah. go back to bed, innit? Trust me, trust me, trust then me. Then I'll go out <laughs> and then I'll get, the, I'll get the night bus, like 171, get that from um, get that from Catford and get it to Holborn. Mm. And I knew, for me, I always knew, man, like, yo, I'm going to paint central London because that's mm. where the tourists are. That's where it's at. That's where all the taxi drivers go. That's mm. where, all, that's, I don't know, that's, that's mm. central London. Mm. I thought to myself, like, I'm not going to play the long card. I'm going to play the short card. I'm going to get exposure quickly. Mm. So I was going to, you know, so my ethos is, all right, fine, run down old walls and building sites. Mm. So, yeah, um, hoardings, building sites, old walls, fly posters, rip them off, yeah. uh, rip them off, paint over it, nice white. Yeah. Do a fresh piece, but um, I used to be a builder, so that's the whole like when you see the builder characters. I used to be a builder, so that represents me. I used to work on the building site, high vis jacket, hard hat. Um, used to do extensions, uh, digging, uh, labouring, rooftops. So like I said before, my uncle, my uncle, uh, my uncle's you know, my uncle Stephen. Yeah, he's he's been a very big inspiration because he's an opera singer, so he's he he loves his music. Um, so, yeah, damn it. Yeah. You're too much for me today. I told you I was hungover. <laughs> this is just too much. You, you dude, like it's yeah. almost like you're, you're you're mapped. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You're a builder. Well, of course you're a builder. That's why you're doing the massive pieces in the craziest of places. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, my uncle. Yeah, he, he said artwork that reflects your environment. So I was like, all right. I was on a building site. Lunchtime. Had the pen and pad, and I was thinking, hmm. I've got my I've got my demon character. You know, just mm. the sketchy guy. Mm. How can I make this more me? I don't know, whack a little hard hat on and a little high vis jacket on. And I was like, boom. I remember, I was like, I showed my boss. I was like, boss, man, this is my new piece. And my other workmate was like, oh, mate, yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's quite something there, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Classic builders, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Two's up, lads. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was like, cool, man. I was like, all right, no, I know what I've got to do now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I I went out early. I went I went. I remember I was in Brick Lane, yeah. and I thought I'm the first start in Brick Lane. And I remember I went to Liverpool Street Police Station, and I said I went to the police station. and I said to them, guys, I've got a photo of this hoarding. I said to them, here's a hoarding here. If I paint it, would I get arrested? I I, I, I openly said it to them. I said, if I paint this hoarding, would you arrest me? They go, well, I don't know. You might get arrested. They were like, I don't know. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna paint it, and I painted it, and I didn't get arrested. And oh, I was like, "Whoa, you know what? That's giving me the drive. I love these. I love these street art tours, man. High vis jacket, white paint, roller. Mm. And when I was in them days of painting down Brick Lane, I always used to see Stick. He used to ride past in his bike. He was massive sunglasses and his massive high vis jacket. And he's always nice to me. He always stopped by and said hi. 
And um, yeah, and so seeing, seeing Stick from 2009 riding past, this, yeah, that just gave me more inspiration mm. to think, like, you know what, I'm just gonna do more street art, Brick Lane, Central London, all them spots. You know? So there was an all city mentality. You wanted to yeah, kind of get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are these are the for those that ain't in the UK. Like Brick Lane is it's it's seminal in street art and in graffiti, isn't it? it yeah. Um, I used to live there. God, we're pushing on ten years now. You and lived it was there, very yeah? different. Yeah, oh, it's a very different place. Different next place, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's changed a lot. So at least mm, most yeah, places. Definitely. Do. do you think? Uh, do you think street art is contributive to that? To the 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 change of landscape and the way people, the way people consume art, in places like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, like all those years ago, yeah. um, like so 10, 15 years ago, when I was going down here a lot, um, there was a lot more street art there, yeah. um, a lot more rundown buildings. But now there's a lot more graph there now. The graphers yeah. would just be like, "Yeah, we want to take this back." Yeah. And um, now um, that that tunnel by the um, station. Yeah. I remember, yeah. like, I remember the days when that tunnel used to be clean, mm. you know, just brick wall, mm. few few tags here and there. Mm. Um, but now, yeah, like this is full mm. of graph, you know, Every, mm. everybody like bombing out mm. each other. It's cultural appropriation, a uh, cultural appropriation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and where am I going with this? Because you know what? It's a controversial topic, isn't it? The whole good v bad of street art and yeah, what is yeah. defined as street art. You know mm, what I mean? Mm. There'd be some people watching right now that are like, you're street art. Yeah, exactly, man. There'd be some people there saying, nah, it's more than that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I veer on the, it's more than that. And I think the people that buy the houses that are right close to the graffiti, they know it's more than that. And you can't define graph so easily anymore, yeah. can you? No. People's, no. People's, people, people own a bit of graph who ain't into graph because they've, they, they, it's so present in their day to day. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like it's just a, it's just a, another noise, isn't it? It's accepted in many respects, isn't it? Yeah. I mean um I I I, I appreciate graffiti. Um I used to graph myself 2003. Um that's how it all started. What did you write? I used to write UZI. Uzi. Yeah, oh, Uzi, shit. Uzi, 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 just, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just around my area. Yeah. Um okay. so when I was 16, I used to be in like a little crew called um Crooked Souls Crew. And they used to go out and like you know, we used to, we used to like rap and mm. stuff. Made a little album. Yeah, I noticed when you were doing the one two on it. I, yeah. I, was, I hear the American uh, rapper. Yeah, you know I mean, like, oh. um, yeah, you do that. You mm. Rap, rap on top of MF Doom beats and Madlib. Oh, tight. Yeah, you know oh, what I mean. Oh, tight legacy shit. Come on. Come on. Fire. You know, Madlib. Yeah. Uh, rapping on them beats. Under underestimated, unsung Madlib. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Production mm. exile as well. Un yeah. Underappreciated. Yeah, yeah All these definitely. kind of MF Doom and that, you know what I mean? It's... Yeah, I heard that MF Doom's British. That's what I heard. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's born. He was born in England. That's but awesome. Moved to America. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like we, um, so, so what inspired me to do the graph was just, again just going on the train from Catford to Charing Cross with my mum, mm. and just seeing all the um, all the graffiti on the train tracks. Mm. Seeing Zombie, mm. um, seeing Known, mm. Oka, all of that, mm. all them dudes, you know. Yeah. Seeing them guys and um, yeah, I was just like, all right, cool. Like when I was on the train, as soon as I got home, mm. paper, A4 sketch pad, pencils, yeah. started doing my own little drawings. Yeah. And I said to myself, oh, one day, one day when I grow up, when I, when I can leave the house, I'm going to do graffiti. Yeah. And then, yeah, as soon as I was 16, sneaking out of the house, three in the morning, my stairs used to creak. So I always had to literally like jump over the, 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 the banister, yeah. like, do a little side jump. Um, oh, you really were Mission Impossible, weren't yeah, you? Then, then go, yeah, then, 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 then what I do is side jump, then I'll stop. <laughs> then I'll stop and just to, to make sure that, you know, when, when, you, when you do the side jump, you do, you've got that loud thud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. To, 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 I stopped just to hear, like, my parents, if they're awake or not. And, like, most times they wouldn't be. So I was like, cool, man. Sweet. Then I'll go into the kitchen. Drop, watch the trip wire. Yeah. Flip over. Yeah. yeah. Go into the kitchen, then close the door quietly, then stop again. Then be mm -hmm. like, stand by the door and be like... All right, cool. No one said nothing. Then sweep out the back door, over the back garden because I lived. I lived. Uh, I used to live on the in the in a corner house, yeah. house on a corner, uh -huh. so I could just jump over the wall and got oh, access easy. to the Boom. street. Yeah, off you go. Yeah, that's the that's the advantage. Out of the traps. Yeah, exactly. So I used to go out and paint train tracks, uh, different spots, so it's just, just all around local, just Catford and Bellingham. Did you get caught? Um, yeah, there was one night I got caught, so I was out, and um, I was just literally just finished. I thought I'm done now. Yeah. Um, I had a JD bag full of. Uh, 
paint cans yeah. and I had a few sketches. So all yeah. this work I'd done and um, I was walking and a um, police car was driving and he, I was walking literally like, you know, they were across the road from me yeah. and the police car was driving and then um, the police car had his window slightly open Shit. and he looked at me yeah. like really slow. It was like a movie where I was mm. walking slow. He was driving slow and I looked at him, he looked at me and then um, I was like, cool. And I, then I walked on and I turned around and I said to myself, please don't do a U-turn. So I just kept on walking and I see the police car and it stopped. I was like, oh no. And it did a U-turn. And I thought, ah, you know what, fuck this, man. I'm out, man. Well, you, you ran. Yeah, I shouldn't have run. I should have just dealt with it. But back then, when you're 16, you don't really know. Yeah. The, the only thing you think is run, innit? Did it, would, how, were, you, were you shook? No, I mean, I was just like, all right, I'm out of here, man. I'm going to run through the park. So this is where I, I uh, so yeah, I had to run through the park, but I, I didn't make it to the park. So I was running, I had the police guy chasing me, and I had another police guy on foot. Um, so yeah, I was just running, man. Like, I had mad stamina back then. And I must have fell over. I was running the road and I fell over, cut my knee and I still got up and the Fed was literally like about two metres away, still running. And then um, I was like, all right, cool, man. I'm going to literally get, go to the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm running to the park and over, over, over in the distance, I just see meat wagons all parked up. They, yeah. they barricaded yeah. They barricaded the road. And I was running and I was like, oh man, they're here already. And I turn around and I see the police guard just driving slowly behind me. I'm still running. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, 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 yeah. They're just like, oh yeah. And then yeah, man, jeez, man, see the feds and I stopped, and they're all there, meat wagon, they're like, yeah, they're all standing there. I'm like, oh, oh shit, okay. Yeah. I was like, yeah, guys, cool, man, you got me in it. Yeah. And I was just like, cool, but man. But did they know what they got you for? Yeah. So I just, I just fell to the floor. I just, just I was like, so tired. I was like, oh, guys, I just fell to the floor, yeah. and then they, they arrested me. And I was like, guys, you've got to carry me to the van, man, because I am out of energy. All that run I've done, I'm out of energy. And um, they said, well, basically, mate, we, were, we had reports of a burglar, a, a young black male with a hood up, and he was a burglar. Um, I was like, well, mate, I was just doing a bit of graffiti. So mm. they could smell the spray paint. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, it was not, but it was, yeah. They okay. saw the cans. Yeah. Um, I had all the drawings as well. So yeah. when, when they, they linked them up. They're like, yeah. oh, you did there, you did there, you did there. And then, yeah, I got arrested for that. So oh, I got put shit. in a cell. I was 16 at the time, so yeah. they had to tell my parents and they told my mum and dad. Shit. And um, yeah, my, my dad was still in bed. <laughs> <laughs> they were still in bed. Oh, tight. This I'll was three in the pops. morning. Three, yeah, three, <laughs> yeah, I got arrested four in the morning, 2003. And um, yeah, and then, um, yeah, I was got put in a cell. Uh, I remember like, there was like, they got a nurse, like a, like a police nurse that, you know, first aider. She cleaned me up, I had loads of you know, cuts when I fell off, fell on the ground. And um, yeah, I just put in the cells, in the cell from like four in the morning till like I think eleven o'clock the next next day. Oh mate, what was it like? I mean, I've never not that I mean, you know, there's always time, I guess, but I, I've never been in jail, and uh, I, I can't imagine what that was like um, for a sixteen year old, especially. Uh, I mean, I was, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I was like, all right, it's just me, myself, yeah. and I, innit? Yeah. So I was more concerned about. I think I was just praying about my parents. parents. Thinking, you know, they're going to be screwing, innit? Yeah. And I thought, oh, and it, it got to like, I think what's, the time... What's, what, what, was, what was the worst that you were expecting to hear from them? If, if, if obviously they knew that you'd been caught, what was the worst that was going in your mind? Um, just explaining to them? Yeah, explaining to them, um, just the embarrassment of getting caught, yeah. you know? Um, and yeah, so I remember like, uh, my parents came to the station and I come out of the cell for a bit and they're like, oh, your mm. parents are here. I was like, oh, yeah, you're right, Mum. You're right, Dad. Mom. Yeah, my Dad didn't talk to me for a whole week. Yeah, my Mum was like, what are you doing? What are you playing at? What are you doing? Yeah. You, know, you, you know, you shouldn't be going out that time. Mm. You know, you should, you, something could happen to you. Mm. You don't know where you was. Mm. So, and it was, yeah, and it was that that made me think, like, yeah, like, you know, I think to myself, this graffiti game, man, boy. Yeah. Because uh, I, was, I, was, I was the only guy in my, in my crew that got caught. All my mates, they, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't take it to the extreme I did. Yeah. They didn't go out three in the morning. They always did it 10 at night, done. Yeah. But for me, I took it to the next stream. Mm. That's how I am, you mm. know. I'm a 5 percenter, you know. Did it make you reevaluate? I'm a 5 percenter. Did, did, you, did you make you realise you, that... Because it must have been quite a redundant feeling that you, you took it to the mountain for your age. Like you say, you're the extra, you yeah. went an extra mile. Yeah. And you, got that, you must have had a real uh, new, a fresh self-assessment. And that must have been quite hard to get the grips with, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 man. Um, just like, I, for me, I was just, I was different from my mates. Um, 
they they were they were on it, but I was more just you know just over on it, mm-hmm. militant. Mm-hmm. Now, my mama said to me, "Oh, yo, you're haunted. You're militant. Yo, yo, you're militant minded. You're haunted." That's what she said to me. God, I love that. You're haunted. Oh, I love that haunted. Yeah, Fire. yeah, yeah. You're all haunted. You're <laughs> A lot haunted. of you. Yeah, yeah, too right. All of us, all of us art guys, all yeah. of us graph guys. Yeah. Um, so when I got busted, I just thought, and I, I was in the south thinking, bloody, I should be in, I should be in school now. I should be in yeah. sixth form. Thinking sixth form starts in about like twenty minutes. I'm in a so, cell, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thinking, boy, this ain't right. This one's for the memoirs, isn't it? You yeah. Know? yeah. So um, I got out of the cell. My dad picked me up, and obviously I didn't go. I didn't go to school then that day. Just yeah, just came home. Then um, the police were like, okay, you've got to come back in the next two weeks and we find out, you know, I, I had to find out whether I was going to get cautioned or whether I was going to be fined or taken to court. That's so what happened to you? Um, yeah, they just cautioned me, yeah. Oh, you were lucky, boy. They got cautioned me. And then, yeah, then like, for me, and that was my first time getting arrested and now I've got a whole career of being arrested. You know, I've been arrested so many times now. And I, I thought to myself, all right, keep up How the How many times have you been arrested? Tons of times for all sorts of things. Countless. But um, yeah, man, all sorts of stuff. But for me, mainly the graffiti. Of yeah. uh, the street art, sorry. Um, I last got arrested for street art. Um, that was two years ago in Croatia. Did a piece out there. Um, Blackmore, yeah, Blackmore, Blair, Blackmore was smart. Blackmore didn't come out. Oh, it came the first it, yeah, time. it came out the first time. It, yeah, and, but for, did yeah. Today. it did his piece, like I said, me over on it. I had to go back. Yeah, I had to go. He did his piece, he did a, he did a bit, he did his piece, done in it no, for me. No. He's like done. Wow. I was like, I was like, oh, wait, oh, that was a good spot. I'm gonna go back again and do some more. And I want to, you know, because I, I did this pillar. It's a nice little. It's an abandoned mall, and it's a nice pillar. And I did when I first went there. I only did half. I did like half of it. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back there with a ladder. And luckily, the apartment we were staying in had a ladder. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, bro, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go back round two. You wanna come? And he's like, no, nah, bro, I'm chilling, man. Uh, but luckily, my other mate Corey came. Then yeah, round two, finished it. Literally finished it. 20 minutes, finished it. 20 minutes ago, finished it. I was just chilling, rolling mm. up. Then this policeman just came, some fat policeman. And he was uh, like, yeah, you, what are you doing? Have you put permission? I was like, no, nah, man, just, just. I'm just doing it. I'm just there, man. Just painting, mate. Like, just making art, man. He goes, what the fuck I got to do with you anyway? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man. Um, yeah, you shouldn't be doing this. And he goes, you got any ID? So I gave him a driving license. And then luckily my mate Corey was there and I had some weed on me and I was like, so this oh, guy was, but like, this guy was, the weed was in my bag. So I was looking at my bag and this guy was just walking around, like just looking at the graffiti, like just taking photos of it. And I thought, Nath, this reminds me of Midnight Express. So Midnight Express, that Turk, that movie where the guy gets, um, it's a Turkish movie. Well, not Turkish, it's an American movie, but an American guy gets taken to a Turkish prison and there's many situations where he's in. Hmm. And I, I, that situation, I was like, rah, I'm, I'm not in prison, but this is a police guy. I'm in Croatia. What do I do, man? Do I just sit here and like, you know, knowing the weed's in my bag, he's probably gonna look in my bag. So I'm like, all right. So he's looking around, I'm thinking, Nate, use this opportunity. Yeah. So I was like, wait, I was like, wait, Corey, bruv, you're not in trouble. I'm in trouble. Mm. You're just with me. Mm. He ain't really gonna deal with you. So you know what, bruv? While while I'm here, yeah, bruv, take the weed, innit? So I gave, I got the pouch, I gave him the weed. I said, just take it, mm-hmm, get rid of it, mm-hmm. put it, put it somewhere. Mm-hmm. And he's like, cool. So the guy didn't notice this. The guy's still there, just, just looking at the artwork, just f- uh, taking photos of it. And um, yeah, man, Corey stashed the weed. And then the guy come back and he's like, yeah, do you have anything on you? Drugs, mm-hmm. anything? Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, no, nah, nothing. Then um, yeah, he just had to look in my bag and yeah, nothing. I was like, woof. Then um, yeah, I got taken to the police station. It was only like five minutes, two minutes down the mm-hmm. road. Um, didn't get handcuffed. And um, yeah, man. Um, I didn't get put in a cell either. I was just in the um, office room, just getting interviewed. So I, yeah. in, in other countries, it's, 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 it's weird, man. It's just weird, isn't it? I would imagine so. Yeah, it was yeah. weird. So I was just like, okay, I'm not putting me in a, not gonna put me in a cell. Okay, this is different, man. So I'm yeah. in there chilling. He's got this, got this, got this guy there, just like just constantly smiling at me on his, on his laptop, like, <laughs> cool. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And he's like, yeah. Did it make you feel e- uneasy or comfortable? I don't know, man. I mean, Corey, my mate Corey was there with me as well, actually. Big up Corey. Big up Corey Stewart. What's that, Corey? Yeah, a friend from long time. Okay. But he was there with me, and um, he was there, and he was just, just chilling with me. And I was like, mate, I appreciate this, man. You, for you just being there. Yeah. And then, and then, and then they, they said to him, okay, you, you could go now. <laughs> and he's like, all right, sweet. Then he left. Then it was just me and them, and I was just chilling. They just asked me questions like, you know, what are you here for? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm here for the festival, Outlook Festival. That's yeah, you know, that's, that's why I went there. Yeah, that's why yeah, I went yeah, yeah. Um, Croatia for. And I thought while I was there, I was gonna do, you know, do a bit of painting. Yeah. And then there, yeah, after all, after being there for like about two two hours, three hours, finally let me let, let me go. 
And um, they, they're like, okay, we'll be in, we'll be in touch. Yeah. So they had to get a translator as well. Yeah. So you had to wait for the translator. I had an interview as well. Um, I was calm. I was just like, you know, I've got art yeah. on my side. Yeah, yeah, that's the, and I've I think that's it. I mean, it's, it's the, 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 the criminal aspect of it. I thought we've, we, it's, a, it's one of the most, more prominent discussions on, on this show. Um, but, but for street artists like yourself to have cut your chops in graphs the way you did and to be to have the the, the badge of honors yeah, that you yeah. are <laughs> fortunately constantly getting arrested yeah it, is that just is that a general is that part of the is that like a soldier complaining he's getting shot at or is it does it not it doesn't appear to me that street art is that incriminating it's not no it's not it, you know what it is so what is with yours how come how come it's just um it's some, some not everyone's it's all you know what when it comes to getting arrested it's all down it's all down to that 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 police officer how they feel yeah, about true. it isn't yeah, it yeah that's true it's all about the personal mm. person isn't it yeah. you know um I've I've come across where police um have, have seen my work and they're mm. like yo man we love your stuff oh that's sick crack on of course you know is there a sweet spot because I mean look let's look at a big big shout out name Big shout name inside the place, of course, for, you know, you guys always collab together, you know? You yeah, do yeah. run alongside the graph quite closely, and I see the collaborations you do. Yes. Um, there must be a sweet spot where it goes from an, a, a nasty thing and kind of tolerated to a, no, do more now, do more because they're liking it, where you'd be tapped on the shoulder. Yeah. Where in that, when is that sweet spot? When is that? Because so I think about it with a lot of writers, to be fair. Like, I'd love to have a zombie <laughs> or a cos piece outside my door. Mm, if I mm. was to see, I'd be like, keep going. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or force or anybody, you know what I mean? Like, that would just be incredible. Yeah, yeah. But where is that sweet spot where it suddenly does become an okay thing to do as a street artist? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what I do is I, I play smart with it. So when I go central London, mm. painting the Coldstream Guards. So recently I've been um, I've been checking uh, Blackmore down at he, he lives by um, Battersea near Victoria. Yeah. So I've been going down there, and um, a lot of the walls down there, a lot, a lot of the hoardings down there are nice. Like the houses down there are all cream, like, mm. nice cream colour, and they have a lot of like residential hoardings there where like the houses are just being built, scaffolding, yeah. and they've got cr nice cream hoardings. So uh, about a couple of weeks ago, Saturday. I just went out, me and the dog, and um, yeah, just started painting the Coldstream guards on the, on these holdings. Do people like see it and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's fire. Keep yeah, it. people were loving it. Because they know it. you. Yeah, people, people, people that know me love it and people that have never seen it before, they're like, wow. You know, because because they, they 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 see me. I went through the days of like doing street up with a pen. I used to use a big fat marker pen, mm. um, grog, occasional bit of crink. And you know, I used to use acrylic paints. Mm -hmm. So I used to paint artwork on the building sites using Sharpies as well mm -hmm. and paint them using acrylic paints from the works. Mm -hmm. There's a shop called The Works. And um, yeah, I, I get my canvases from there and I used to get my acrylic paint from there. So, you know, you, you, I used to get like, you know, old beer cans or old bottles, cut them up and mix my paint in them, make a bit of water and, and brush. And that, to be honest, I don't really do that as much anymore. I'm now straight cans. Because mm -hmm. cans now, it's winter time. I'm priming a wall white. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful thing about cans, you could paint on the emulsion while it's wet. Oh, yeah. The days of drying time. Sick of that, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's winter time. Oh, yeah. Just painting this lovely real. wall. Like, winter time, new, when I used to use pens, I had to paint the day before. I had to paint the wall white the day before, go home, leave and go back the next day, then it's mm. be dry. But I couldn't paint on the same day because the air's too yeah. damp. Yeah. So the cans, the cans, I just, yeah, I just get a whole bundle of cans, put them in my bag mm. and, um, yeah, just crack on. Do you, uh, do you think people take it afterwards and keep it? Yeah, they, 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 they must yeah. do. Some people message me and say, oh, yeah, I've got your holdings in my house. I'm like, oh, cool, man. I, I, it doesn't bother me. No, because no. I can't take them home. No. And it's also, for me, it's like, you know, that, that, it's free advertising. Yeah. I, you know, the I, disposable side of graph, that's, that's one thing that's always intrigued me. You know, the, the the copy and push, you know, just repeat, repeat, repeat. It, yeah. And do you think, you'll be a good person to ask this to, do you think it devalues, uh, does it depreciate to the, 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 the commercial item that you want to sell if you've got a load of things that are going out for free? 
you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think having free stuff is good. Mm. You know, because... Um, See, stab over there, she's going like... <laughs> See, kills it, yeah. But yeah, I think having the free stuff, um, you know, giving, I'll give out free stickers, um, free pieces, because like, as I said, my art's from the heart, mm. you know. I ain't trying to, you know, I'm not really trying to sell work for massive prices. Mm-hmm. I always keep my artwork affordable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sure. I like to cater for everyone. Mm. I like to cater for those. So who, everyone can have yeah. a piece. Though, yeah, for those who mm. live in a council flat. That see mm. my work. Mm. They they got to pay for childcare. Other more important things than art. Yeah, I do cheap. I do affordable pieces for yeah. them. Yeah. You know, thirty pound bits, twenty pound bits. Take your pick, whatever you want. Then I do. I've got high range bits as well yeah, yeah, yeah. for those who want to spend a bit of money. So like for me, I don't discriminate on my clientele. And this is your like you make a livelihood of art. I do that. it. Yeah, full time, man. And that's it. Full yeah, time. Full time. So how, many do. Do, how many do you knock out a day? At the moment, um, as in create. Well, this morning before I woke up this morning, I really wanted to go and exercise, but I had so much to do, you know. Before I had to take the dog out, mm. so um, I did about two. I did two pieces today, just on paper. Just you know, somebody bought them in the art shop, and um, so yeah, I just had to just wait. How long would it take for them to be sold? Would they get cold, get sold pretty quickly? Um, well, they've, they've been sold already. So, but, so on the, you got the, you got the Nathan Bowen art shop, mm. online art shop. People buy the product, yeah. and then bang. Sometimes, um, sometimes the product, sometimes the product, um, I've, I've, it's, it's online, but I haven't, I haven't done it. The photos mm. there online, but yeah. I haven't done it. Yeah. So it's like, all right, cool, man. It's that's made what you do, order. isn't it? That's, yeah. That's, so sometimes, that's a trick. Right, all right, I've got a piece to do. I've got a beefy to do. All right, mm. bang, bang that out. Sweet, that's a done. trick, isn't it? That Roll is it a up, good post trick. it, done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a p- yeah. I get I get paid beforehand. People pay me beforehand. Yeah, yeah. And then, oh, I, yeah. then I do the work. That's too right. <laughs> yeah, too that's damn it. right. Um, um, all right. Yeah. So from a marketing point of view, because you you can afford to do that. Yeah. Not just financially, but you can afford to do it because it's such a unique style. If you don't own that shit, and you know, what I mean, and make it yours. You have to put the market into it, or someone yeah. else is going to plagiarize it. You know what I mean? What's your what is your marketing strategy? Like it's something for people can to take yeah. away from. You know um, what I mean? Okay, so like you know, people out there, if you're listening, you know, my my strategy is like treat um, treat each holding each uh, each street art piece I do, mm. I treat it like real estate. Mm. Make money off of it. Make money. So it's like I right, each holding I see is an advert. It's a, it's a platform for an advert. I make my artwork on the wall. It becomes an advert. I sign my name, Nathan Bowen Art. I sign that. I do my characters. I make it look professional. Mm. I am professional. Mm. People see that. They take photos of it. They 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 look at my name. They go onto my social media. They go onto my website, mm. and they they buy they buy my work. And mm. that's it. It's like seeing an advert. It's like seeing Colgate everywhere. Mm. It's like seeing Stella everywhere. Yeah. So like yo, it's all about yo using the streets as your own gallery and making your own advert. And um, I was chatting to uh, Blackmore's brother. And he was just uh, he was just saying, yo, man, that's it. Like, you, 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 the way you work is like, yeah, you, you, you make your art like real estate. You make money off of it. You, you, you make your product on the street and then the money just comes in from itself. And that's, that's, what, that's, that's, that's the strategy. That's what I do, you know? More. Advertising. Advertising. Using, making your own advert, you know? Yeah. Sign, your, sign your name. I sign my name by Nathan Bowen. Mm. I'm not afraid. Mm. If feds want to come for me, they could come for me. It's so easy. Mm. By Nathan Bowen. Mm. I'm not afraid. Yeah, I've yeah. got nothing to hide. And do you think that that d- differs from the, that fact? Yeah. yeah. It does, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's almost like being so brazen that exactly. yeah, that's your the word. intentions are correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Brazen the word. Yeah, that's yeah. the word. Like It's all about being reverse brazen. Psychology, yeah. Reverse psychology. Reverse psychology. Yeah. Exactly. Wow, what a way of yeah. thinking. And yeah, it's brand. Everything is brand. Is there anyone out there that you could say, "Ah, oh, you know what? Uh, they they are the hardest core of the graffiti scene, or they're you know, they they're in a certain dimension that you feel like, hey, you know, they could go three D with this. They could do what I could do. Is there anyone out there on a on a on a more hardcore plane that you you could you could see potential in in that strategy? Um, yeah, tons of people. Um, I could see uh, one of my one of my one of my guys, Slazy. <laughs> yeah, big up Slazy. Um, yeah, he's a great artist. He lives down my road. Um, mm-hmm. He has like a yeah. Japanese style uh, where he does his characters. And I've taken, he's, we've been out, we've done a few collabs. And um, he's, he's, just, he's just getting better and better. Mm-hmm. And I know with him, he's, you know, he's a very internal guy. He'd be at home sketching all day, doing his thing. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But when he goes on the streets, he's, 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 he's learning how to transfer the A4 to, to, A4 to the door. Mm. That's what I call it A4 to the door. Woo! 
copyright control. Hold tight. <laughs> A4 to the door. Come on. You know? Yeah, yeah, out of the art case. Uh, so, you know, A4 case. paper. Yeah. And, you, you know, anyone that wants to, you know, transfer what they do on paper onto the street art, you know, you, you, you take it to the door. Mm. You know, the size of a door, mm. you, you enlarge it. Yeah. Enhance your materials, enhance your medium. So with Slazy, he learned how to enhance his medium because he always uses his fine pens. Mm. And then I said to him, mate, take it to the door. And then he started doing hoardings and now he's doing more stuff. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he's, doing his, he's doing his thing. So I could really see him, uh, really, like, if, if he does more street, up, yeah. he really would excel. How's, a, how's your take on graph? Any favourites? Anybody that you're checking on a on a more underground level? Um, I don't have any favourites. I mean, um, on the graph scene, um, obviously, like, um, I guess known, known has always been, like, the one I've always admired. And I, yeah. I, met, I met him, I met him um, at Broccoli Street Art Festival a few years ago. Mm. Um, He's quite, got a whole d different thing. Like, I've, Oh, he does his music now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does the music too. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I just love the fact that when you you can see in a graph writer, there's more to it than just the just the name. Yeah, you know I mean, you can mm. tell that, that someone's yeah. got like an artistical exactly thing yeah. about them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that anybody wouldn't, but uh, and he does unknown. He's the unknown as well. Like, yeah. I love him. The unknown. Like, Them big you know, just unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, it's right. It's known, but. Mm -hmm. Unknown. Mm. Sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you and it in. <laughs> it's not the first time his name's come up in the show. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. We've got to get him on. Got to get you on. But um, but when I first met him, um, he was like, mate, he said to me, mate, is it you that do all these things, all these guys around, all these characters around? And I was like, yeah, bruv. And I was like, oh, I was like, who, who, who are you? He's like, yeah. I'm known. I was like, mate, known. Wow. And that's when I was like, oh, wicked, man. Like, you know. I love those conversations where you just, what you're begging to ask, and it's just that liberation of, like, I've said it, I've said it, what's his name? Yes, it's him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I love those ones. It's almost like, keep doing what you're doing, and inevitably, you're yeah. going to meet your heroes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It must have only just been a matter of time that you bucked with, with Noam. I can see that. I can see, because he's, he's very artistical. There is yeah. a, an artist in him, isn't I bumped there? into him again uh, a couple of years ago. Just, I was doing street art down mm. the lane. I just see him. I was like, yes, brother. Oh, with like, the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. oh. on his way to doing it's something. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the integrity in that. Yeah. You know, messing about. You're on the stage. That's the main stage right there. I think the street is the stage. Yes. Like, if you yeah. can get... <sighs> There's no compromising with it. Do you know what I mean? No. It's raw. It's yeah, exactly. Anyone. It's real, isn't it? Yeah. It's there. It's not, the streets ain't going nowhere. It's inevitable. When yeah. I ever see people beatboxing, and you know, yeah. I'm always there watching. Sometimes you get recognised, and, like, and they suddenly just kind of, kind of coy up with the beatboxing. But I like supporting people that do. Yeah, that's hardcore shit, isn't it? It is, man. It is, mate. Um, yeah, and like, it's like you know, art and music are very similar. Mm. And it's like for for me, it's like okay, I, I could do street art wherever, really. But as a musician, you know, if you want to promote yourself through the street, that's quite harder. You know, you've got to work at certain spots, the right places. There's other musicians that go to, like, Joe, Joe down Tottenham Court Road, uh, outside the station, there's a spot. Mm. All these guys use it. One day it's this guy, next day it's that guy. Yeah. And the crazy drums with the, the yeah, pop Yeah, pans. so it's like, if I, wanted to, if I wanted to do, like, a little music thing there, I'm thinking, how would I get a spot? Or like, what would I do? Is it, is it politics? Yeah, is there's it, a battle there. There's a politics there, isn't it? And this you know? is the same politics I feel that happens with street art and graph. Yeah. It's, 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 and it's, it, it's fair to say that that's the way it should be, you know? Yeah, this, yeah. This, this story comes out a lot in the podcast, and it's actually quite interesting that you've coined it and com made it comparable with busking and yeah. doing stuff like that. Yeah. That's an interesting angle, man. Because now when I think about it more, it's like, of course. But I don't know, man. We put, we put street art and graph on such a pedal stool, mm. you know, particularly on this show. And it's, it's actually nice when someone gives it a different point of view. I like that. That's it. I mean, for me, I, I love collabing. So I've been doing a lot of, like you said, I've been doing a lot of collabs with Name 26. Oh, tight. Um, yeah. That's my yeah. dog. Big up Name 26. No. Yeah. 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 Name all day. Hold tight, DDS, of course. Yeah, DDS. Um, but yeah, no. um, it's doing work with him and, and you know, he, he's, uh, he's, he's working with him. You know, he's, he's taught me a lot. You know, he, the way like he paints, he only used stock caps. One of the nicest geezer yeah. ever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you only use your stop caps. And for me, I, I always avoided the stop caps. I always saw him and I thought, nah. And then when he's doing his fill-outs, he's using the stop caps. I'm like, oh, I'm wicked. 
I'm thinking, oh, that's a good way of saving paint. Mm. So watching them paint, I've, I've learned how to economise paint. Instead of always using a high-pressure fat cap. Yeah, blow it all, out. It all yeah. out. Yeah, use the stock cap. Put, yeah. You can even put a stock cap on a high pressure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it comes out nice. And it's, yeah, sometimes you need to economise on paint. Mm. So yeah, painting with name, um, it's been it's been great. Just different, finding different spots. I've been trying to get him onto more like, yo, bruv, trying to get him to do more residential stuff. I love the combination <clears throat> of you guys together. I love that fact that it marries graph and street art the yeah. way it does. No fear involved. I like it. You all mm. have a character popping out of the side of one of his dubs. And it's like, and then there'd be just this crazy colour mashing emerging. Yeah, just, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I haven't seen that done too much before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm feeling it. Yeah, um, also like um, Peak. Peak, another graffer. Um, doing, some, doing some work with him. Yeah, Peak's, yeah, he's, he's, he's a good, good artist as well. He does a lot of train tracks as well. Mm. Um, mm. But yeah, it's good, good meeting him. Mm. Uh, we mm. did a little piece uh, a couple of months ago down in um, Deptford. And yeah, again, he's he, the way he paints. He's just, he's just, he just knows what he's doing. Nice. Knows what he's doing on it. You know, he uses different. It's always a good uh, confidence. Colors, it's good confidence isn't it, with someone that knows this. Sh- what yeah, and, uh, and with Pig, he's very, um, he's a very persistent guy. So he's like, all right, but if if you, if yeah, if you do your one of your bits there, mm. maybe mm-hmm. do one there as well. Do one there. That's, and he's like, yeah, he's, he's, he's instructing me. So I'm like, you know what? This guy has got this guy as well as a graffiti guy. Mm. This guy has got uh, higher skills in. Observation, yeah. uh, visual, use of um, space and stuff like that. Exactly, yeah, yeah, and that's key, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's for key. Sure. It's all about being versatile. Yeah, yeah for sure. What uh, products? What, what stuff do you use? What, what inks? What paints? What, what um, brands? So um, yeah, I like um, Molito. I use the Molitos mm-hmm. for um, when I do my canvases. Uh, I love Iron Lac. I love the dirty black Iron Lac. Ooh, um, okay. I like all sorts. I like uh, Loop. Um, what about pens? Montana um, pens. Yeah, I use oh yeah, grog pens, crink as well. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I, 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 I like to use uh, a lot of the inks as well, the Montana inks, mm. the Molotow inks. Yeah, mm-hmm. Molotow inks are great. Yeah, Molotow inks. The silvers are sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they come out real. They, they come out real dense. Dense. You know, straight on the black. Um, I've been using um, basically these solid paint markers. So they're these solid paint markers. And it's basically it's paint, but it's it's not wet. It's solid, so it's like a crayon. It's like a crayon. I've seen this. Yeah, paint mark. I've been using those. And What's it like? What are they like? Are they? Yeah, they're great. So you just like you know, you, it's, imagine that's the paint marker. Mm. You could just twist it and yeah. it comes up like a prick glue stick. Oh my and, god, yeah, that's you, fire! You could just draw, draw your thing on it. Draw, yeah. Do a thing. Some of them come in like rainbow designs. So you've yeah, got white, yeah, black, different bits, and then when you draw it, it just comes as as that weird like. Liney effect with all the different colours. Imagine it on your pieces, that would be crazy. Yeah, so I've been, yeah, occasionally been doing those, um, just finding bits and bobs. Mm. Uh, but yeah, and also, yeah, just, um, yeah, using, just learning about different graph mediums, like things like this. So if you ain't got the ladder, you just yeah. stick that in a spray can and it gets, gets your height, you know, stretch over and, you know, get real high. See what's going on here. Intel, uh, motherfuckers. Come yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> amazing technology, isn't it? Yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, again, high amazing. pressure you need for that one. Um, but Super high pressure. Got yeah. There. So, we, really? me, me and Blackmore had a job. Um, oh, how long does that last for? How long does this last for? It will last the time. You, just, you just need to you need to just clean it. Make okay, sure it doesn't get clogged. So yeah. it, lasts, it, lasts, it lasts forever. Yeah, right. just keep, keep it. Because caps don't really last that long, do they? That's the... Yeah, acetone. Yeah, acetone. Tap cleaner. Cap cleaner. Yeah. There so, you go, yeah. people. There cap you go. Cap cleaner. Acetone, cap cleaner. So it's just like a spray can of acetone and you put your cap in it, spray it, and it cleans it. Oh, that's sick. Technology see, again, isn't it? See, thinking people, <laughs> just thinking things through, right? This is crazy. Yeah. You know what? There's going to be a lot of kids out there that have seen your work and they want to know all this sort of, t- sort of stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. why I brought it up because I think it's super important. That, you know what I mean? You've got... Yeah. Knowledge is king. Knowledge is king. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, um, I mean. yeah, at the moment, I'm, I'm making my own ink as well. I'm trying to learn how to do that. Um, and then you got your own drinks. Yeah. I mean, you really do the brand. You yeah, really man. Are. People's Captain, you know. Um, it's, it's a collab. The, yeah. the People's Captain is the company. And um, yeah, I just, just do the artwork for them and put it on the cans. This uh, shit yeah. isn't basic. Literally. Yeah, People's yeah, I mean, Captain. Check so we're out. rolling on the podcast here, huh? <laughs> well, but yeah, man, it's, 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 it's just it's been versatile. You know, um, I make sculptures too. I don't always just like, you know, uh, do the characters on the street. I like to do sculptures, find scrap materials. Again, afterlives. Give it recycling, giving these scrap materials an afterlife. Sick. I used to go scrapyard, 
Used to get old, um, what's it? Uh, old uh, fridge, old fridge doors, yeah? Old fridge doors, just take oh, them off. God. Used to have a nice little bit of white, bit of metal sheet. Yeah. Used to get the um, angle grinder, yeah. cut them up, and I used to make my own road signs. I, oh, I still do, sorry. I still make my own road signs. So road signs that you see, so if you see like a stop sign, yeah. nice circle stop sign. Yeah. So I'll mimic that and yeah. have a character in the middle. Love it, yeah. So then I'll, I'll cut it out from scrap, spray paint it, put the masking tape on, add the layers on, so it's got like a nice white white colour in the inside and on the outside it's got like a red yeah. little uh, yeah. label. And I used to stick them on the streets. So I used to go with, with the ladder and um, just go up to different parts of London or wherever, set up the ladder about 10 foot, then climb up. <laughs> That's bad. I climb up the ladder and um, yeah, um, so yeah, you basically used to just yeah, stick them up higher places. So some of them are still there now. I've got one down Brick Lane that's been for six years. <laughs> that's genius. I love it. You've got spontaneity and creative. You're just like a, you're like a, a, a funnel of creative yeah. energy. Yeah, This is man. fucking sick. No, it's just great fun. It's inspiring shit. I just, you know? I just live it, you know. Um, uh, for me, um, I, 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 I like, I like, I like watching like things like um, cooking programs, mm. uh, UFC as well. I love UFC. Oh, not, tight UFC not, yeah. not for the fighting, more just for the technicality and mm. the mind, the mindset. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just the mindset. That is a mindset thing. Yeah. And you, you apply that. You can apply that mindset into anything. Yeah, exactly. What's it? Uh, you don't rise to your successes. You fall to your. What's the way? I've heard this one. Yeah, you fall to your. Oh, that's gonna kill me. You fall to your. I've heard this one before. Yeah, I'm not going to get it out. Yeah, like, no, yeah, but that's the, yeah. that's the mindset, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you in sport especially, if you apply that shit to your yeah, exactly. And that's, that's systems, what I, I, yeah. you fall to your systems. Got it. That's Got it, there. Yeah, yeah. Well yeah. done, Kells. You can, don't edit. Keep it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, for real, it is, Got isn't it? it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn right. Your success is your faulty systems. That is a that is a sportsman's mentality, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The more discipline you can apply. More things like this, cutting corners and time and shit, and yeah, that's how you get the best out of your art. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so I, <clears throat> I watch these guys and how they, yeah. they they think and sportsmen, and um, yeah, I think you know what? I, I mean, I've always been like that with my artwork. Anyway, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not an athlete. Mm. Um, you know, I do I do my I do my exercising, but I'm an athlete when it comes to doing the street art. Mm. I'm on it. You know, I don't mess about. You know, I did a street art piece yesterday. Ooh, uh, I like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Did it, um, did it like five, like half five in the afternoon, mm. residential area again near Victoria. Um, just a nice massive board. I painted it white. Came out with dog. My dog's called Clay. What's that Clay? Yeah, big up Clay. Big up Clay. She big comes Clay. out. So I got a high vis jacket, and I put her. She got a high vis jacket too. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we look like we look That's like a team. Fire. We look like a team. I mean, when people see the dog, it's like, oh, man and his dog. Ah. They don't know what to think. They're like, oh, the softener, man. the softener. Exactly, the dog's yeah. a decoy. But don't get me wrong, I love my dog. dog I don't use a dog for the decoy. The dog's just there for the company. <laughs> I like, love the, that. The dog's there to got my, the dog's got my back. Because sometimes I'm painting, sometimes when it's nighttime, you don't know who's there. Someone could just come in and push me or whatever, take my pants. But the dog's just there by my side, just looking about. So that? it's nice. Do you ever have problems with that? Where... What, have I ever been attacked yeah. by painting? Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. That's no, good. I haven't. Everything's been all yeah. positive. Yeah. Or my, you might get the odd negative guy like, mate, what are you doing, mate? Like yesterday, some guy was like, mate, what are you doing? That's graffiti. I was like, bruv, I'm, I'm doing something positive. I said to him, mate, I had my arms up. I said, mate. I was like, you know, I, so I was like, you know, submitting. I was like, mate, I'm just making positive art for the community. Yeah. Have a day off. And he, and he, Go he, and he, drink he, your latte. Yeah, his dog else. as well. His, his dog was uh, there barking, yeah. and Clay, my dog was just there by my side, just watching. And yeah. I'm like, look at you, you're negative, and your dog's negative. Oh yeah, get the fuck. You know out. what I mean? So he just, he get just the fuck out. Then he goes, he goes, oh, I've seen you all over, though, mate. I've seen you all over. I'm like, all right, then. So why are you making noise then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, all right, mate. Then he yeah. just walks on, innit? and I just crack on. But Job's things worth, like that it? make you feel a bit uneasy. You don't want that while you're painting. Don't want any full stop in your life, do you? Yeah, you don't want all that stuff while you're painting. You want just pure good vibes. So like, yeah, um, then literally. Like what? Five minutes after, a, uh, a woman came with a pram, and she's like, "Oh, just I'm just admiring your artwork, loving it, love it." Just walking in a pram, like, "Yeah, loving it." I was like, "Oh man, like the contrast, didn't it? Yeah, that yeah. guy negative, and then some woman with the kid was like, "Yeah, this is great," yeah. and the kid's gonna see that and yeah. be like, "Yo, man." Sweet. And oh my God, hasn't time changed? Times have changed for graffiti and street street art as a whole. Eh? Yeah, shit, shit has changed. Um, what's the future? The future. Uh, the future is to... Um, What's the mission brief? What's the future? The future is to keep on um, making street art, keep on doing street art, keep on inspiring others as well. Mm -hmm. The more I've got into this conversation with you, this is, well, I don't know how long we've been doing it for, you know, but 
uh, long enough to know. Yeah, it, it's so much more than street art. You know. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like. You could be like it's illustrating books. It's convi- you know, it's conviction and it's execution. And you know, for me, illustrator. You know, for me, it's yeah. all about you know, you, you got your work ethic, you got your plan, and it's all about execution. Yeah. Execute your plan. Mm. You have your plan. Now it's time to execute. That is the word. Yeah, yeah. And execution, you know, conviction with, with haters and things like that. Yeah, yeah for <laughs> real though, for real. Because with with they, they, there will always be somebody that wants to derail. You can't let that, that let it derail you. No, nah, no. Nah. Because you wouldn't be, you'd be an injustice to your creativity, whatever it is you are, and it'd also be an injustice yeah. to yourself. It's funny, we, we, we haven't got that long in a lifetime. No, you just sure. got to yeah. keep turning it around. Yeah. And if you ain't being true to yourself and being who you are, then... then what are you the, doing? You can't let that get in the way of the mission brief. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can you? No, no, that's it. Um, it's only mugging yourself off, isn't it? Yeah, so like, you know, I, you know, I stick to my guns and so I called it maintenance when I, whenever I've got a touch up my walls. So nowadays I just, I, tr- I travel and I just, I, I look out for my walls. Do you? Yeah, I just go, I feel, you know, I'll be at home thinking, like, you know what, I'm going to pop down to Allgate today, check my wall. So I go out on a scooter, take the dog out and just see if the wall's been vandaled or not. And if it's been vandaled, I'm like, oh, cool. Cool, I right, come back to my morning mm. and, and crack on it. And if it's if it's clean, oh yes, yeah, nice. I ain't got to touch mm. it up. But no matter what, I'm always ready. I'm always expe- I'm always waiting for something. Always, because it's been like that for years. Um, you know, I don't want to mention too many names, making making other names famous and that. Don't want to be doing that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, in my time, a few guys have come for me. But um, but yeah, yeah. You know, um, there's one name I want to mention actually. Gone. I've loved this guy's stuff. Uh, Ten foot. Tight. I love this stuff. I still do. Um, he's, he's gone over me a few times. Uh, but it's all right. <laughs> I like, I've got a big smile on my face because, like, um, yeah, it, it doesn't bother me now. Because it's like, I, I, I don't know, I've got so much respect for that guy. Like, I was in Paddington Station, innit, the other day with Blackmore. And I looked up and I just saw a massive 10 foot, like, really high. And I was working out, oh, Harry, how did he get up there? Mm. You know mm. what I mean? How did he get up there? He's, so, a, dude, but he's, he's a fucking force of nature. <laughs> Yeah, we love so ten, like, foot, we love um, ten foot over here, and he knows it. Hold yeah, tight, so like you know, it's sort of respecting. Yeah, it's, it's respecting my yeah. enemies, man. He, he, he used to he used to come for my work hard, man. He just scribble out my stuff. Ten foot, you know what I yeah. mean? And I'm like, all right, mate, all right. Mm, <laughs> I've loved your stuff for years. Don't make me change. <laughs> and then um, yeah, then he started. Then it, um, yeah, then like then not uh, yeah, sort of yeah, still stop stop mm. doing it. And um, um, yeah, I don't know, don't know if whoever's realised what I'm about. Uh, but I know what he's about, and I've all know what he's about. And um, I just want to say, like, yeah, man, mm. he's, he's a good inspiration mm. of where he gets to, what he does, everywhere you go. You know, like, like Blackmore like said, we were in Albania um, a couple of months ago, saw a 10 foot there, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, no geez. way. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. That wall, but boom, like, he's like, he goes, oh, there's 10 foot there. I was like, oh, God, another one. Yeah, yeah I remember, Jesus. Well, oh, 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 oh. you know what? It's, the, it's those <laughs> things, isn't it? It's. My, right, here's a story for you, right? So my, <laughs> it, it, it kind of segues a little bit, but you, 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 the, the same analogy, right? Well, I broke up with my then girlfriend, uh, my uh, five, five years thing. She knew I was a graffiti fan. She knew how and where I walked. She knew where I went. She knew where she'd find me. But instead of, <laughs> instead of, uh, you know, hit me up, give me the kind of, put me on blast every five minutes, you know, because we felt out a little bit badly. Yeah. She just started sticking her name everywhere. In a, in a graph style, stickers, her name, her name. And after a while, it played on my psyche so much. Wow. Do you know what I mean? I thought that was a cunning, clever <laughs> bit of public, you know what I mean? <laughs> clever. It's a, weird, it's a weird one, isn't it? it uh, I mean, and that is part of graph as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, his son, you know, with, with 10 foot. Yeah, but he does his you know, a few dubs and stuff. Um, right, he kills it, man, yeah. Fuck. But yeah, he, he's, he's a good way of... He's a good example of he's someone who just wants to get up. Oh, sorry, he's a he's a good meter, yeah. Mm. Yeah, he, and um, yeah, and he gets his name out there all yeah. the time, like you know, yeah. perfect way of advertising. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I was in Malta uh, a few years ago. I saw a ten foot there as well, man. <laughs> he's all the international. I was in Ibiza. Yeah. Yeah. You know, another one that's like I teach. I see teach stuff everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? He's always everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Been that for time as well, hasn't it? For time. <gasps> Yeah, man. Well, look, it's been an absolute fucking pleasure. Yeah. And I hope it was as good for you as it was for me, man. Oh, it was great, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. No. Proper vibes. 
Yes, mate. Yeah, finally, yeah, you know, finally here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, like, you know, appreciate you having me down. Yeah, and, um, you know, it's, it's great, mate. Ethan Byrne, thank you so much, thank my you, brother. Thank you, man. Yes. Cheers, bro. Killer Keller podcast again, all right? Keeping street culture. Don't forget to share. Share is care. And tell a friend to tell a friend. We are like, it was out of fashion, all right? Stay lucky, people. <laughs> Peace. Hey. <laughs>